Hello and welcome to Future Proof, the business television programme that looks at how we can future proof ourselves and uh, up until now I've interviewed many business people and I've got another businessman here today joining me but um, his business is slightly different and I think it has an awful lot to do with future proofing, predominantly around exercise and building relationships. So I hope you enjoy listening to Colin Ten. Colin, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Sarah. It's very good to be here. Yeah. So, um, this is not the first time we've met, is it? No, no. <laughs> Actually, I can't remember. It's a few years ago. We yeah, met, yeah. I, I'm not sure. I think it was 2015, 16, something like that. Um, can, right. can you tell the viewer, what, how did we meet? What happened? Uh, well, we got involved in a charity event for the... Uh, Rocking, Rocking Horse, Horse yeah. uh, Children's Charity and uh, Hilton and Community yeah. and what they put on was a, a strictly dance theme event where I had to teach you to dance over three sessions I think we did and then we had to perform on the night at the Hilton Hotel. We did indeed. Um, there was a restriction on um, the time that we could all spend in learning. It was a competition. We all had professional dancers and uh, the dance chosen uh, was Jive. It was yes, a jive really evening. Jive. And I've actually got a few photographs here um, that I'm going to put up, Colin, if that's oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we had Zoe Ball on the panel Yes, and I as you say, Zoe. it was at the Hilton Hotel, and I can't remember the restriction on time, but it literally was something like seven hours or something, wasn't it? Or yeah, we had um, three sessions. I think it was a couple of hours each session. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where I had to teach you totally from scratch because you hadn't danced jive before. Right. So we. Um, can we I say the videos can be found on YouTube? Actually, and I think you put one up about when we were rehearsing, and I'm like a wobbly jelly. I mean, very, yeah. very wobbly. Um, but we were quite impressed with the jump at the end, and, and there is a photo with the jump. Can you oh, say yes. more about that? Yeah, the jump, well, it's, it was what I call a split, where I thought you came into my arms and lifted you up in the air. And I say on the night, it absolutely perfect. The timing was absolutely perfect on that night. Uh, I know you were very nervous when we were in rehearsals doing it, uh, but on the night it went absolutely perfect. And also I've looked back at the photos and um, I know you, you are fine now, but you've had health worries and you know your heart um, has been, and I think we'll hear more about it anyway. And looking back, I see the photos and I was kind of bigger than you, if you like, and I felt awful of you know you lifting, dare I say, kind of that weight, but you said it was the timing that yes. actually is more important than the weight. Well, yes, but when, when you actually do a lift or an aerial, people think you are physically lifting the person, but it, you're not. It, you are, especially the timing, and with that particular move, it was the timing of your jump, and I was just guiding you up yes. as you went. So the emphasis was in your jump, yes. and then it was just the, to guide you up, and it, you just kept going. Yes. Well, I gave you tribute on the evening. Um, fantastic teacher, does amazing things, but obviously this is linking to Future Proof. So um, I think in the second half, we'll say more about the merits of the exercise and relationship. Okay. Can you say more now, um, your Brighton Jive, how long you've been in business and, and why? Why did you set up your business and what does the business do? Well, I've been running my business, Brighton Jive Promotions for 20 years now. And uh, I started in oh, 1999 with uh, my partner, dance partner at the time, Yannicka Sabo. Uh, we met in London. We did all our dancing in London. She came down to Brighton, went to university. And at that time, there was no sort of teaching of jive uh, at the time. So we decided to start a class. I used to come down on a Sunday evening. Uh, the Hanover Centre, I remember, which we <laughs> this little small hall we used, and it became so popular, I was doing three classes in an evening, yeah. just to uh, accommodate the people we had, uh, and then from there, I started a class in Worthing, mm. and in Peacehaven, but at the same time, I was still working full time in London as an engineer, and that went on for three years, we were exhausted, mm. basically. Mm. Uh, and then I was made redundant from my engineering job and decided that I need to find a job. So 
give it a go and went full time and yeah. You haven't years, looked back since. 20 years later I'm still there. Fantastic but you don't, I know you run classes but you do much more than that and businesses do buy into you and again this does fit with future proofing because it ties up with teamwork to um, learning something new and what have you. So how can people access you on what level? So you run um, classes, what else? Yeah, classes we do uh, corporate entertainment, team building, uh, do band nights where I book rock and roll bands people drive to. I do a regular club on a Tuesday night in Worthing where I DJ. And uh, we started, I started with Sue Walker Riley uh, recently doing workshops where we do learn to jive in a day. So we're traveling to different areas around Sussex where my predominant classes are Brighton and Worthing. Yes. And I say over 20 years we started to saturate the market in those areas. So um, we've, we've been to Crawley, uh, Hayward's Heath. I've uh, been to your Worthing class actually, and I um, around the time of, of um, uh, the competition that we entered, I did come across, I think, afterwards and just, um, you know, came in and had, and it's great, great fun. And, you know, people say that sitting is the new um, smoking. You know, so all the health warnings on smoking, there are now the same kind of health warnings about the dangers of sitting. And um, getting up and jiving and going to a jiving class or indeed getting your employees to jive is incredibly value, valuable. Um, what do you, what testimonials have you had? People who have bought into you, what, what, what feedback do you get? Well, I mean, we, we've had different types of people from all backgrounds come. But I found mainly a lot of people in recent times are people that are on their second relationship, either lost their partner or they've separated, divorced, and now on a new relationship. And they find that the dancing actually is a good connection, brings them all together. Um, also from single people come, I've also met other partners through the dancing. Mm. So it, it, it's a very social thing. So I found a lot of people who feel a bit lost actually, have actually found a lot of comfort and reconnected with people. Um, and, and this very much ties up with health and well-being and, and loneliness is, is yeah. um, a large part of, of people's sense of isolation. And actually what's come to mind too is, you know, sometimes you don't always feel like doing something like this. It takes a bit of energy to get up and get out there, but it's well worth it. And it's made me think back to when we danced our competition, all of us um, business people had a remit. I think we had to raise either 1,000 or 2,000 pounds. And when I put it out to my network, no one really sponsored me. So I remember, and I didn't feel like doing it, but I ended up having a really good day, was I got permission from Brighton Racecourse to go with two rocking horse buckets. And it was a rainy day, and I was up there outside the gates, um, and I just stood there collecting money in that bucket to try and reach my thousand pounds. And, uh, and I did it, and I did it. And it just made me think, you know, I didn't feel like doing it. I thought it was, I'd be miserable, or, you know, that I would feel, you know, people would laugh at me. There are all sorts of fears yeah. that you can have around stepping out. Yeah, but also I, I we, we go out on the streets, we do dancers plays in the streets, and you can see how people react to it, how it actually brings joy. It does them. bring joy. Can you stay with me into the second half, Colin, because I do want to talk more about how dancing jive not only gets us up out of our seats, but it also helps us to be more human as we move forward to future-proof ourselves. Okay, absolutely. Thank you very much, Colin. That's fantastic. And uh, the beat will go in a minute, so it's fine. And then we just uh, let that. EQ, Emotional Quotient, is better known as Emotional Intelligence. It is a tangible tool that can sit alongside your services or your product, and it can be taught. Leaders with high EQ have less stress, they're more effective, and they earn more money. There's a great saying, just because we have pains, it does not give us permission to be a pain. <laughs> 
I believe that teaching emotional intelligence has a direct impact on your sense of success and your net profits. EQ will empower you and your workforce to drive the change that you want. Change brings transition. EQ can help unpack what's holding you back and speed up that period of transition.